we are going to move on to our top number 37. Can you believe that? <laughs> I'm excited about this one, Adrian. Yeah. I've, I've got I've okay. to tell you. So um, this week's art talks about something new, but also very old. An amazing private collection of Italian marbles was just revealed last year. I'm not talking about the types of marbles that roll, you know, where you kind of flick. I was going to get my tiger eye on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but sometimes I suspect that the heads of some of these marbles actually have rolled. <laughs> and perhaps even the people that, that they were modeled after had heads rolled. Uh, indeed. <laughs> I'm speaking of classic statues carved from marble. Over 90 of these recently rediscovered marbles went on exhibition in Rome last year. Uh, what I'm talking about is the private collection of the Torlonio family. The Torlonio family arrived from France in the 1600s and set up shop near the Spanish Steps in Rome to sell fabrics. They very quickly became wealthy, including being patrons of the controversial artist Caravaggio, which I think we're going to probably cover sometime this year. Mm -hmm. They later shifted to banking and, in fact, administered the finances of the Vatican under Pope Pius VII in the early 1800s. Jock? Yeah, so, you know, there's actually um, there's a very interesting, uh, intri there's intrigue around this particular um, set of marbles in that they disappeared for quite a while. And then it was a very, um, I guess, ambitious, if you might say, uh, reporter uh -huh. that that actually, you know, got wind of this and got a, the first picture of these marbles, huh. um, and which we're looking at here, which were down in the basement. If you can imagine these antiqu antiquities being just warehoused in a, in the basement of an old uh, of an old villa. Wow, uh, was the reporter actually allowed to even be in there? No, not even not even <laughs> oh, close. I mean, okay. this person snuck in at the you know under the dark, uh, you know, dark of night uh, and you know, got got the picture. You can see from the picture it was it uh -huh. was very dark in there, and then snuck out and. The person to this day is still unnamed, hmm. but they've expo that, but they exposed the, the existence of these marbles, which has now made it possible for all of us to enjoy them. Fantastic. So uh, why don't we shift over to Sarah, who's going to tell us a lot more about these marbles. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, thank you, Jacques and AJ, for that introduction. And I also wanted to welcome Dario and Yannick from Fincantieri this week. And so because they're an Italian-based company, we are focusing on the Italian Torlonia family and their vast collection of marble statues. So behind me is the Torlonia family crest. Um, so I'll just give a little background on the family and elaborate a little bit on what AJ said. So the Torlonia family had humble beginnings with Marino Torlonia moving to Rome. And he was a cloth merchant, a money lender, which eventually turned into the Torlonia family bank. His son, Giovanni Torlonia, was kind of responsible for the more rapid growth of the family bank and the main feat being that they became bankers to the Pope. And because of this, Giovanni was given the title of Duke. And throughout the next 150 years, the Torlonia family gained massive wealth and nobility and actually the new title of Prince from Pope Pius in the early 19th century. So they kind of moved their way up the ranks of nobility and they purchased many villas throughout Italy and they began to collect art particularly marble statues, maybe to furnish their many villas or to add to the family collection, but no one really knew about their growing private collection and its scale until more recently. And also a fun fact is that um, American tennis player, Francis Shields, who is actually a Torlonia descendant, is the grandmother of actress Brooke Shields. So Brooke Shields technically is a Torlonia. Interesting. <laughs> I thought that was a little... Fun, interesting fact. Okay. So um, as they gained more power and wealth, they began purchasing villas and properties throughout Italy, with the main residence being in Rome proper. So as you can see here, this map just kind of gives some reference. This is a historical map of Rome. But as I mentioned, the Torlonia family purchased many villas and apartments, and no one really knew the scale of their collection. But we can do some math to help figure it out. So the photo that Jacques showed uh, in the basement was of about 630 statues in the basement of a building that the Torlonia family was, uh, they owned the building and it was, they were converting 93 mini apartments into a private museum for their collection. And they stored everything in the basement while they were um, doing construction. So we'll take 93 apartments times let's say 500 square feet per apartment is roughly a 46,000 square foot villa. 
and they owned roughly 10 villas throughout Italy. So you can just imagine, you know, the square footage they had to, to decorate, to furnish with, to exhibit these sculptures. Um, their collections included thousands of marble statues. And as is the case with a collection this size, historians, scholars, and even the government demanded that they open it to the public and create some sort of exhibit. So more recently, they began, obviously this is a more modern photo, they began a restoration process with the luxury jewelry company, uh, Bogari. And here you can see a restorer working on an antique vase from the Neo-Attic Roman era. And a challenge for the restoration team was that the statues and the sculptures were acquired over the course of many years and different eras, and therefore throughout the years had been treated with different chemicals to help restore or were kind of made with different materials and chemicals. And um, an interesting fact is that this is actually one of the largest known antique vases ever. So it just shows you how valuable it is to catalog and exhibit their vast collection and really understand what was in the collection. So one reporter that was able to kind of view the collection before it went on exhibit made note that there was a room full of busts and that this was maybe the most astonishing bit of the collection. This is, um, these are busts from the Pompeian era, and they include some of Rome's most notable figures, as well as ordinary people. And I personally love the idea or thought that this gorgeous antique bust of marble that looks very official and is very expensive could just be some ordinary person, and their descendants probably have no idea that it even exists. Um, the Torlonia collection is comprised of some 180 busts making it one of the biggest collections of Roman portraits in the world. And it seems like every aspect of the Torlonia collection is the biggest, the best, the most exquisite. It really, you know, is um, history making. And so it makes it that much more appealing that it was so protected and private for so many years. So here's another very famous statue in the collection. This is a rendition of Hestia, the goddess and protector of the hearth and home. And she's dressed in peplum and has a veil over her head. And so the matronly aspect depicted is kind of reminiscent of certain deities of the Greek pantheon. So this statue can be dated back to the second century, but it's likely that it's a Roman copy of a Greek bronze statue from 470 BC. But something that arises when a statue is this old is the idea of restoration and maintenance throughout the years. Um, her robe from the back to the front is slightly different. It kind of might be hard to tell from the picture, but it's likely that either the front or the back was somehow in need of restoration and maybe the chemicals used to change the color slightly or when they restored it and redid it, it was you know in a slightly different style of the time they redid it in. So this is a relief of a port scene, and there's tons of important imagery in this piece, and you can see the attention to detail, making this one of the most famous pieces in the entire Trelonia collection. Um, if you look in the middle of the relief, you can see Neptune, the Roman god of the sea, holding his trident, and just above him is Bacchus, the Roman god of wine and fertility, holding his wreath. And something that really interested me was the bit of red color seen on the flames next to Bacchus. The restoration process brought to light some of the traces of color that originally adorned the surface. And what I didn't know is that brightly painted marble sculptures were really common in antiquity, um, but the color rarely survived through the years and the taste kind of changed to liking more pristine white marble. And it's thought that the port scene was once entirely covered in paint when it was made. So it's almost like a sculpture and a painting in one. And um, many of the symbols in this piece, like the eyeball, for example, um, are to represent good luck for a safe voyage. And speaking of voyages, um, here is a statue representing Ulysses from the Odyssey. 
And there's a moment in the epic that states, quote, thus every three sheep bore a man. But as for me, there was a ram, far the best of all the flock. Him I grasped by the back and curled beneath his shaggy belly, lay there face upwards with steadfast heart, clinging fast with my hands to his wondrous fleece. And so this is the moment when he and his men are trying to escape from the cy Cyclops. I just thought this was a really, um, a really nice piece. Um, so part of me wishes I could give you all detailed, super detailed information about all of these pieces in the Torlonia collection. But I think part of the draw, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of the secrecy of it all. Um, I mentioned that Bulgari was working with the collection to help restore it, and it actually went on exhibit to the public in early 2020 with plans to take the exhibit around the world. But unfortunately, that only lasted a few weeks before the lockdown began, but hopefully they will resume with it once life kind of goes back to normal. Um, and I just wanted to end with this poem written about them during the height of their power. <laughs> so here it is, okay. The head of everything is God the Lord of heaven. After him comes Prince Torlonia, Lord of the earth. Then comes Prince Torlonia's armed guards. <laughs> then comes Prince Torlonia's armed guards dogs. Then comes nothing at all. Then comes nothing at all. Then comes nothing at all. Then come the peasants and that's all. <laughs> I just thought that was so funny. I mean, that really just shows their power and their wealth and how highly regarded they were in society. <laughs> That's incredible. Yes. yes. Do we have any any questions? Um, just uh, unmute yourself and shout out or I'll put throw, something in the chat. I'll throw one yeah. out there quickly. So Sarah, you mentioned that they were uh, going to be available to the public. Um, are they going to be at the Getty or are they cut, were they going to be at the Getty? Do you know? So I believe there is an exhibit at the Getty. There was some crossover with um, Somebody, I, I can't remember their exact job title. They worked at the Getty and then they went and helped create this exhibit in Italy oh. with, the, with the family. But I do know the Getty has um, part of the collection, I believe, but I think the main collection um, started in Italy and then was going to travel around the world. Uh, Liz might know a little bit more, uh, more detail on the Getty exhibit. Um, I think there are some of the statues at the Getty, though, right now. Yeah, we'll put something yeah. in the chat about that. Yeah, yeah, I suspect it's probably at the Getty Villa. I, I don't know if the, if the villa is open at all, but because um, they already had a collection of, right. of Roman and Greek statues. But uh, yeah. fascinating. Do we have any questions? I, I, I find it, Sarah, just totally mind-blowing that, you know, we think of these statues as being very regal, right, and the polished mm -hmm. marble. Right or aged marble. And back in the day, they were actually painted in incredibly vivid colors. I just yeah. still find that incredibly amazing. Well, mm -hmm. you know, what's really kind of cool about these is you're really capturing what people look like or the perception of what people uh -huh. look like in the yeah. era. You know, we're talking, you know, <laughs> what, the second century or first century, uh, you know, it's, it's right. absolutely incredible. Well, and we have no idea what the paint, the kind of detail that the paint added so right. sometimes mm -hmm. we look at a sculpture and you're like, who is that? It's just a, a man, you know, yeah. and it's supposed to be this person or that person, but we don't know how much detail the paint added back in the day. Right. right. Well, you know, it's also interesting. Yeah. A lot of these marbles, um, a lot of marbles you see, you know, there's limbs missing and things uh -huh. like that, right? Mm -hmm. With these- And heads um, missing. And heads. Because they probably right. rolled. <laughs> and gosh, you know, with these, you, the, 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 they're pristine. I mean, there's, right. you, there's no, I mean, there are no cracks. There's no, I mean, yeah. they're- well, funny you say that. So there, yes, they, you know, were kept in pretty good condition for the most part for being centuries old, but there were instances where they would have to, maybe not um, in the most recent restoration, but throughout the years, a limb would fall off and they would replace it with that other limb that they found. And so sometimes they would take this head and put it on this sculpture that was missing a head. So sometimes there is kind of like a hodgepodge of um, limbs and, and heads and things. Oh, that's um, but for the oh, most wow. part, you know. Fascinating. Fascinating. Do we have any questions in the chat window or anyone just want to unmute themselves? I think if not, everyone was just blown away by this. This was just incredibly fascinating. Yeah. I think, was there like 6,000 of these statues or something? I just, I've read somewhere, it's an yeah. amazing number of these. Yeah. 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 It's almost like having your own town. You populate a whole town right. with these uh, sculptures. <laughs> Statue people. <laughs> yes. 
All right. Hey, fantastic. If you have questions uh, just during the course of the rest of the town hall, please put them in the chat window. And so thank you so much, sir. This was just an incredibly fascinating topic. As, as always, as always yes. an amazing job.